Last week, I began a three-part series on the power of the tongue. We looked at three important traits of the tongue, small but powerful, small but dangerous, and small but revealing. Be sure to check out that episode if you haven't watched it yet. Today, we'll be looking at the second part of the series, which is the contradictory character of the tongue. Hey there, my name is Joyce Omondi Waihiga. Welcome to Sitam Church Online. The truth is, the tongue is contradictory in nature. It's inconsistent. One minute it can be used to bless God and the next minute it can be used to curse his image, the very humanity that God himself created. In just one second our tongue can take us from our highest calling to our lowest evil. James chapter 3 verse 9 to 12 says, with the tongue we praise our lord and father and with it we curse human beings who have been made in god's likeness out of the same mouth come praise and cursing my brothers and sisters this should not be can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring my brothers and sisters can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. This inconsistency should not exist for those who know Christ. Our speech should consistently glorify God. Whether we're singing our hearts out in worship on Sunday or disciplining our children for unfinished homework on Monday evening or you're dealing with rough drivers on these Nairobi streets on Tuesday morning or dealing with your colleagues and bosses at midday on Wednesday, our tone and our vocabulary should consistently glorify God. The Word of God emphasizes in verse 11 and 12 just how unnatural this duality is and should be for the child of God. Just as it is unnatural or absurd for a fig tree to bear olives or a mango tree to bear bananas, it should be unnatural and absurd for a child of God to live in sin. To drum this even further, Charles Spurgeon said, unless you are regenerated, born from above by a new and heavenly birth, you are not Christians. Whatever you may be called and you cannot produce the fruit which is acceptable to God and any more than a fig can produce olive berries. At this point, you might be wondering, hey, Joyce, seriously, slow down. We were just talking about the tongue and words. How have we gotten to questioning whether we are really Christians or not? Like, sure, I know I need to work on controlling my tongue, but I still love God and all of that good jazz. And so how have we gotten to whether my fruit is acceptable to him or not? That's because that's just how powerful the tongue is. Verse 6 says, The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of your body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself on fire by hell. This thing, this tongue, can damage our entire destiny with Christ. The power of life and death, heaven and hell, is on our tongues. Now, let's be honest with one another. This is really hard to put into practice. I don't have it figured out. Far from it. And because of this inconsistency and how easy it is for our carnal nature to switch between good and evil, blessing and cursing, we need to find a way to control our tongues. We need to figure out how to put them in check. We need to figure out how to tame them. And that's exactly what we're going to be discussing next time in the third and final part of this series on the power of the tongue. 
If you have any questions or comments, feedback so far, you can raise them in our comment section below at Sitam Church Online on all our social media platforms and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll see you next time for the third and final part of this series on the power of the tongue. God bless you.